Hello, America. Let's listen to Dinesh D'Souza. Where, Dinesh, where is Pat? Uh, where Dinesh D'Souza uh, was talking about, uh, uh, talking, doing a lecture on his, uh, on his new movie about Clinton and how, how the, what the roots are of the Democratic Party. Now, he's talking in this book, and he makes a very good case about the roots are in, um, in the Klan, and that's just, that's just the way it is. The same kind of... The, his book and my book are two uh, bookends to everything that you need to know. You know, the progressives and the roots of the Democrats are exactly the same. And in this book, he talks about how... Uh, or in, this, in his movie, he talks about how um, uh, the Democrats had a flip. They flipped a switch. At some point, the Republicans who have, the African Americans who were always with Republicans, switched and became Democrats. And, and when did that happen? And then all of a sudden, the Republicans who had always been for civil rights suddenly were painted as the racists. When did that happen? A liberal professor stands up and says, this is ridiculous. That didn't have, that happened that happened uh, later, and, uh, and you can't really make the case. Oh, and then he does. Uh, you have to hear this discussion between the liberal professor and Dinesh D'Souza, and we do that when we come back. Welcome to the uh, program. So glad that you have uh, joined us today. We want to go right to Dinesh D'Souza, who is about to uh, demonstrate how to take down liberal professors. Dinesh is prepared. Uh, he knows his stuff. He is unafraid. And this is the first time, if you listen to the question from the liberal professor here, you'll hear that this is the first time that I've ever heard a liberal, A, run away from the word progressive. Have you ever heard that before? No, they love it. They love it. They love, they love a, the they've ne- I've never heard anybody run away from the word progressive. And B, I've never heard them ever say the progressives were bad, ever, 50 years ago or today. It's always, they were perfect. I think this shows you that the war on progressivism, the education that we have done, that Dinesh D'Souza has done, is actually now uh, making an impact. Because listen to the liberal professor and how he tries to stop Dinesh and how Dinesh takes him down. We also talk about uh, how race is merely cosmetic. Um, aren't you insulting all the intelligent people here and the 80% of African Americans who are Democrats? Yes, yes, I am. You're right. Thank Stop you. Stop it. Thank no. you. <laughs> By claiming that the current Democratic Party has anything to do with that. Dixie Crat party from 50 years ago that was trying to stop them from voting. Aren't you conflating the word Democrat with progressive? They have utterly nothing to do with each other. Oh my the God. current Democratic Party has absolutely none of those values from 50 years ago. And you're pretending oh that they are guilty of something. Aren't you, aren't you trying to claim that Jesse Jackson is a dupe and shouldn't be rep- uh, supporting the Democratic Party because Abraham Lincoln was a Republican and freed the slaves? Now here he comes. Let me, um, let me try to tackle that very frontally. First of all, um, probably the biggest thing going for the big switch that I mentioned earlier is, are two facts, both of which are very powerful. The first is that whites in the South, who used to be Democrats, do now predominantly vote Republican. Yep. Right? Yep. Fact, yeah. Fact number two is that blacks, who used to vote Republican, now vote overwhelmingly Democratic. Yep. And operating on the assumption, which I think is reasonable, that people understand where their own interests lie, it would certainly be right that blacks currently see their identification and their interest in the Democratic Party. Now, here, is the, here are two interesting questions to ask. This Number one, when 
did blacks switch from being Democrats, from being Republicans to being Democrats? The Democratic Party was the party of the Dixiecrats all the way through the 60s. And, and if what you say is true, that the blacks made a switch to their racial friends, it would appear that the black switch would have to come in the 70s and 80s when blacks see these racists are now moving over there, so it makes sense for us to move over here. Mm -hmm. But in reality, blacks moved overwhelmingly to the Democratic Party in the 1930s. The black vote went from about 15% Democratic to about 70% Democratic within four years. In the, the places they could vote. That's right. But which here, was the North. Also in the Jackie Robinson was a Republican for darn good reason. That's absolutely right. But what I'm here's what I'm here's what I'm getting at. It wouldn't be today. Well, the, we'll, the, we'll, we can debate Jackie Robinson because it's always difficult to know what dead people would like. If Martin Luther King were alive today, Martin Luther King isn't alive today. Okay, but here's the point I'm getting at. The reason that blacks switched from the Republican Party to the Democratic Party had everything to do with the benefits of the New Deal and nothing to do with racism. In fact, in the yes, and in the South, two blacks start switched to the, to, the, to the Democratic Party. It's not that blacks couldn't vote in the South. They said there were all kinds of barriers to black voting. They couldn't vote. Under FDR, there was a... Blacks couldn't vote in the South at all. No blacks voted in the South. Very, very few. How many? How many? I don't know. Okay. He does. I thought so. <laughs> Look, there were all kinds of poll taxes and barriers imposed by the Democrats on the black vote until the Democrats realized that they could get the black vote by offering jobs, welfare, retirement programs. Are you telling me that FDR in the South was telling blacks who are voting for the Democrats, you can't vote? Not true. Not true. Blacks in the North and the South switched to the Democratic Party because of New Deal benefits. Many of them were very sad about doing it because they were leaving the party of emancipation and Lincoln and flinging themselves into the, into the party of the Ku Klux Klan and the Dixiecrats who were in the South and were in the Democratic Party. Exactly. So what I'm saying is it was a Faustian bargain in which you get economic benefits and at the same time you're in bed with the racists and you're on your own team. Stop. Stop. And I'm saying that is that I mean, he has done his homework. He knows. And this liberal professor is not getting it, is not getting it that sometimes, for instance. Let's see if we can find another time and another group of people. What he's saying here is during the Great Depression, when there was fear, when there was hunger, they had a choice. Do I go with FDR, who says he's not a part of these Democrats like we've all known? He says he's not a Dixiecrat. He says he's not part of this progressive movement to annihilate us. And we're in trouble. And there's no place to go. We don't have any food. We don't have any jobs. Do we go with him and trust the fact that he's not like that, even though he's been like that his whole life, do we trust that? Or do we stay with our principles that Abraham Lincoln put together? And what they said was, we have to eat. So we're going to go for this because we have to eat, we have to have jobs, and I'm going to trust that the Democratic Party is not the Democratic Party that is going to keep us down they are like FDR, and there's a new tomorrow and a new beginning. And so they threw themselves in with them, and they made a Faustian bargain. They made a deal with the devil, and that didn't work out well because the Democratic Party still was the Dixiecrat Party. But they had already sold in. They had already bought in, and the other side was saying, I'll take all these benefits away. And so now they were trapped between, if I don't vote for it, I lose what stability we do have in our family. If I, if I do vote for it, I still empower these Dixiecrats. Do you see any similarities of people who are making bargains now and saying, well, it's the best I can do? I got to do something it's the best I can do. And this liberal professor is saying, no, well, people don't think that way. I contend they're thinking that way today. No question. There's no doubt about it. Right. 
I mean, it, it is such an eloquent takedown. Uh, and there's more, isn't there? There was two seconds more. Oh, two seconds more. Um, <laughs> it's such an eloquent takedown uh, of this professor. And it shows that if you do your homework, they have no place to go. Mm-hmm. If you challenge, there's, their, their thinking and their history is so full of holes because they've controlled the system of education for so long and no one was willing to question it that they don't have anywhere to go when you back them into a corner and you have the facts. I mean, this is uh, not to be pessimistic on your take on this, but it's, it, it's a lot of heavy lifting. I mean, we are moving the opposite way. As a society, you've uh, cited before uh, the grade school homework uh, from like the late 1700s. We've we've showed this on TV before, and mm-hmm. they're like these mind bender questions that now no one on earth. I can don't know answer. if I can pass an eighth grade exam given in 1860. Right now, we're going from that to Twitter, right, yeah. where everything's in 140 characters, and no one uh, has any depth on anything seemingly. Right. And you're asking everyone, well, as long as you're just as smart and as articulate as Dinesh D'Souza, everything will be fine. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that's that's the way we're going right now. No, but, uh, but for the first time, pessimistic. But, but for the first time, I mean, look, Liars is the number one book uh, in the country. Uh, Dinesh D'Souza is number two. If you want to look at the number, if you want to look at the New York Times, he's number one and we're number two. Oh, well, great. okay, I'll take either. That's great. Um, it, it, those are both books showing you the roots of the Democratic Party. He is showing the roots of the Dixiecrats and the Klan. I am showing you the roots of the Klan and the roots of progressives that have infected both parties. But they both fit hand in glove. And I will tell you that it's going to be a remnant. It will be a remnant. It is our job if our kids are, we know we're going to be outnumbered. Our founders were outnumbered. We know we're not going to be as well equipped. Our founders weren't as well equipped. We know this is going to be a fierce battle. We got it. What we don't have yet is a a strong foundation for our kids and a strong foundation of truth for our kids. We're not going to be able to get this. American history prior to 1880 is no longer being taught. Why? Read the book Liars. When do we start? Oh, about 1880. Why? Because that's when the progressive movement started. And all your kids are being taught are the progressive lies. But with a book like Dinesh, with a book like Liars, you, with 50, I don't know about Dinesh's book, mine has 50 pages of footnotes. You don't ever have to quote me. Your kids can do what Dinesh just did. And more importantly, they will know the truth. Forget about the colleges. They'll know the truth. And if they don't have the truth, we have zero chance of restoring it. Zero. But for the first time, I mean, gosh, let's look back eight years ago. Do you remember when we first found the progressives and we were so, we were so stunned? We were like, my gosh, this is it. Mm-hmm. And remember we used to have the argument, you know, people would call up and they'd be like, well, stop talking about Woodrow Wilson and progressives. I'm like, no, this is, what ma- this is all that matters. If you understand this, you'll understand all of it. Remember when we used to have to fight that? Now, now at least in our audience... Our audience is prepared. They know what that means. And now they're building on additional rooms to the house with things like liars and getting even a deeper understanding of it so they actually know how to fight. We have to equip our families and our children with the truth, and we have to stop looking at November and even four years from now. We have to start doing the hard work for the battle that lies ahead with our children.